I'm Lisa Bilyeu and I went from housewife to co-founder the billion dollar company Quest Nutrition and now president of Impact Theory. Our mission with this show is to empower you and all women to recognize you really can become the hero of your own life. Welcome to Women of Impact. In 2015, seven in 10 mothers with kids younger than 18 were in the labor force. That's up 47% since 1975. Now here's another stat for you. In 1946, only approximately 9% of women were childless, which has more than doubled since then. Now, neither of these stats actually surprised me in the slightest. You see, I grew up with a mum who gave up her career to be a stay-at-home mother. And the very next generation, me, has decided to not have kids at all. Now, I recently sat with her and asked her why she gave up her career. And she looked me so matter-of-factly dead in the eyes and said, well, there wasn't a choice. It was expected of me. Now, through my own personal evolution, I totally could relate to the pressures of having children. I was brought up in the same traditional Greek family, and throughout my childhood and during the eight years I was a stay-at-home wife, I thought I was going to have children. It was expected, and the truth is, I didn't even question it. Until we actually started Quest, and over time, my desire to be in business overpowered my desire to be a mother. But I was ashamed. I was ashamed to say it out loud in fear of judgment, in fear of judgment on my womanhood, in fear I would be perceived as not being nurturing or not caring or loving. And you want to know the worst part of all of that? I didn't fear that judgment from my husband. I feared it coming from other women. So I just hid it. But times have changed. Now it's not as rare to say that you choose a career over motherhood. In fact, it's now tipping the scale in the other direction and being a working woman is celebrated. Now I was in line at a buffet once and the woman behind me in light conversation said she was just a mother. Now she wasn't saying it because she didn't love it. In fact, she beamed when she spoke about her kids. So why on earth does she say just? And that's when it hit me. We women are so concerned about what other people think of our choices that we seem to feel like our choices are not of value. And I think we all just need to stop. We need to stop judging and having opinions on what any woman chooses to do. Whether you choose to be a stay-at-home mother, a working mother, or choose to not have children at all, no answer is right, wrong, or easy. And so my hope is that in opening up this discussion, we women can begin to see that this might not have to be a battle we fight. This is not the White Walkers versus the Night's Watch. We can be allies and support and uplift each other no matter what we choose. So today I wanted to do a different kind of show. I wanted to bring on women with different stories, but ultimately women who have the same message, their choices, like for so many of us, weren't easy. Okay, first up, I'd like to introduce to you the phenomenal Lillian Garcia. During Lillian's first marriage, she thought she didn't want children, and even Cyclops couldn't compete with how laser-focused she was on her career. And, well, it paid off. WWE host, singer, and speaker, this woman has performed in front of hundreds of millions of people and has been featured, well, literally everywhere. But despite her historic rise, her marriage took a fall. But every story has a silver lining, and for her, it led to finally meeting and falling in love with a man of her dreams. And that's when she realized she actually did want children, just not with her first husband. But as life would have it, after endless attempts to conceive, they finally were told they couldn't. And it hit hard. So after careful consideration, they decided to adopt, but that plan was put on hold when her dad fell ill. Once he sadly passed, she evaluated her life once more and came to the conclusion that she was no longer in a place to raise a family. Yes, it's safe to say this woman of impact shows what it means to truly have the courage and strength to make the choices that are right for her. I'd also like to introduce to you the sweetest human being on the planet, Sanya Hatta. Wife and co-founder of their purpose-driven company, Thrive, the number one rated conference for entrepreneurs and business professionals. Along with her husband, Cole, their mission isn't only to show how to build and sustain a for-purpose business, but making your money matter in order to create a positive impact around the world, making their message and their voice fresher than Wrigley's gum. 
Now, apart from running their thriving business through their organization, they have not only helped build roofs, bathrooms, and water filtration systems for an orphanage in Mexico, but have also teamed up with Pencil of Promise to help build schools. And as if all of that wasn't enough, she is first and foremost importantly a mother to two ridiculously cute daughters. But she bravely shares in a raw and vulnerable way on her website more than just a mama that being a wife, mother, boss, partner, friend, sister, daughter and leader is far from easy. Yet this woman of impact shows that it, what it means to truly have the courage and strength to make the choices that are right for her. So guys, welcome to a very special edition of Women of Impact. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> now I can take a breath. <laughs> I'm like, geez, that was beautiful. I was emotional. I was like happy, mm -hmm. sad, everything. Uh, well, thank you guys for being here. Your stories, even in the intro, just doesn't do it justice. And so wow. I really want to take this time to dive in deep and talk about um, the stories and the things that you guys have gone through. Um, how did you feel growing up? What was your, in fact, what was your perspective growing up of having children? Well, it was, I came from Serbia when I was four. And so being an immigrant, it was basically, you have to work really hard your whole life. You save your money, you get married, you buy a house and you have children. Like it's just standard. That's mm -hmm. what they all do. And, and really back at home, my dad's one of eight. And so you want to have a big family. So I've always known that I wanted to be a mother. And so I have have my two beautiful girls and I cannot even explain where I am in my life right now. I never would have thought I would be where I am. I think that seeing my mom work two jobs her entire life to support us and my dad, but I did know that the day that I had children that I wanted to be able to go to their performances, their plays, or go to you know, a gymnastic show or anything that they were doing, I wanted to really be a part of it, you know, become a soccer coach. And I want to have best, the best of both worlds. I want to work because I really, really enjoy it. Um, I tried the stay at home mom thing and I just, it, it, I, I lost myself, and so I really wanted to see if I could pull off both, and it's definitely been really difficult, but I, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure it out every day. You, you've said so many great <laughs> things here that you've kind of, like, brushed past, and I just want to, like, rewind because... Yeah. The, yeah. So you said that you were a stay-at-home mother for a while. Was that initially your dream? Um, yes, because I thought that if I devoted all my time and it was the stereotype when you see people, they're like, oh, I'm a mom and this is what I do and I make meals from scratch and I play crafts all day and I, you know, it's, there, there is the Pinterest mom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, um, it wasn't for me, but it is for some of my friends and they enjoy every minute of it and I admire them for that. I, I just, I really don't enjoy cooking at all and I tried to do the whole cooking meals from scratch and being you know that perfect mom but it actually was more damaging to my husband and my children by me trying to be this person that other people looked at me as mm. and I realized okay you know what instead of me cooking this meal I'd like to go out and have dinner with my family I don't have to prep I don't have to clean up and it's really quality time that I have mm -hmm. with them so that I can give the business the attention that it needs versus trying to pull that all together there's so much that is ingrained into a woman's mind while they're growing up that you have to follow this model mm -hmm. and I think it's really detrimental to girls and I don't want my girls I want them to see mommy works hard every day I get mm -hmm. up and I work whether it's to be there for the family or to be there for the business. I just want them to admire hard work and to appreciate it and everything that I've given them, but to also enjoy life. Mm. Yeah, because the expectation part of it is really what I'm fixated on because I think that, at least for me, that's where it all started, is realizing that there was an expectation put upon me that I actually didn't choose. And it, I had to recognize that before I was able to break it. So how about you growing up? What was the expectation? Yeah, you know, I grew up, my dad was a, in the army and mom, she was studying to be an accountant. Uh, she was an accountant actually. But when dad joined the army and had us, all of a sudden mom put everything aside 
and was raising us. But I grew up knowing that she wasn't, even though she adored my sister and I, she wasn't 100% fulfilled. You saw that? Yeah. Mm. I saw it. I felt it. Wow. She had a, a struggle where she didn't find enough meaning in being a mother. She felt like it wasn't enough, even though Latin culture, it's all about kids. It's all about having that family, raising family. And so I think that that really got instilled in me in make sure you don't lose uh, the career because you'll end up being unfulfilled like her. Did she teach that or you told yourself I that? I perceived that. Oh, that's pretty powerful. I perceived that, that mom was not 100% satisfied mm. being a mom. But I didn't take it as a bash against my sister and I because right. she adores us. Uh, but I just took it as an it's not fulfilling enough just to be a mother. Mm. That's what I perceived for sure. Is that what led to you in your first marriage saying that you didn't want children? Yeah, I mean, granted, from the beginning, and I like to talk about this yeah. because when I was dating, I was dating him so young, and then when we decided to get married, the week before the marriage, I literally sat in the car and told him, I can't do this. I oh, can't wow. do this. Yeah. And, you know, I tried. I went to therapy. I went to all this, thinking it was me that couldn't appreciate a good man, because he was a good man. So that Ooh. was a struggle. But I knew mm. that I also didn't want, for some reason, I was like, no, it's career time, career time. I just want to do this. And then we have plenty of time to have kids. So... But when we ended up getting divorced, and then I found my husband, that my now husband, I realized right from the very beginning, oh, you do want kids. Mm -hmm. You just didn't want kids here. Mm -hmm. But we went into our marriage, no, I'd gotten off the birth control. Like we went in full, like this is it, we're having kids. And whatever happens, happens. And then going through pre-canine all, I realized, I wanna go into this marriage really putting everything up to fate and not trying to control everything so much and not trying to be so focused on uh, career. Because I was already in the WWE, mm -hmm. so I was already having a thriving career and all. But I, I did feel a little bit of a, God, it would be nice to have a little mini me mm -hmm. around. And then I see my husband, I'm like, man, there's just something about him that'd be so great to have a little mini him, you know? Um, so I was like, let's just, let's just see what happens. Um, all of a sudden, nothing's happening, so I go in and get tested. He goes in and gets tested, and then all of a sudden, it was like, you guys can't have children. And the crazy part about this, you know, I always wonder why this happened. The day I found that out, I was devastated because I thought I was going to have full control. I thought I was going to decide when I want it, when I don't want it, and if and if I even want it. So all of a sudden, the control's completely taken away from me. And after that, we like... Maybe, you know what, babe, let's go do mission work. Let's go visit children's hospitals. Let's get involved with kids in a different way. But maybe it's just not in our calling. So we, we never did like in vitro or mm -hmm. anything like that. I, I, I really wanted to leave it up to fate. Yeah. I really did. So just backing up a, a slight second. So when you get to the point where you've just heard that you can't have, what does that actually feel like? Because... Like you said, you thought that you were in control the whole time. The whole time. And that, for somebody, you know, that you've, you've just controlled this incredible career and you've, like, yeah. your whole life has been basically what you've chosen. And here you are now wanting something that you actually said that you didn't want. Were there moments of, like, shit, I should have had it, I should have uh, done it sooner? And, like, how do you process emotionally through yeah. that? Well, I don't regret not having the kids with my first, hus first husband. Amazing man, amazing man, but we were not the right match together. So even though that means that you don't have children? Yeah, no, I'm really glad that I didn't. Um, but I was, but, but yeah, the process of, wow, like, did I mess this up? Right. Did I look at my parents? Because even now my mom's in assisted living and I go over there and help her a lot. And she goes, I just feel bad that you won't have that. And that scares me too. No. Wow. But you also are there but, for her. If you had children, maybe you wouldn't be able to be there as frequent for her. True. You know, oh. so I really think that it's special when a woman can acknowledge, I don't want to have children because people look at them as if they're selfish. But appreciate that. If that woman knows that she wants to give everything to her husband or just to herself, 
that that child isn't going to get what it deserves. Mm -hmm. And I think it's better that way. I see so many families where the husband or, or the mom or the dad are just gone. And the quality of life for that child, I, I, I hurt for them when they're like, oh, I haven't seen my dad in years. Or, you know, yeah. I don't know who they are. Or they're at work from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and I don't get to share a relationship with them. So I feel like people need to know if I want to be this way, it's okay. It's okay to be selfish. Yeah. And I think when people well, I wouldn't when you even say call selfish, it selfish. Yeah, yeah. It's like it just sounds bad yeah. when you say selfish. But like all the opportunities that you've been able to take yeah. on, I mean, so much success and everything that you've accomplished, like there are things that I have to say no to because I know that I cannot be there because there's drop off, pick up, you know, there's certain things that I need to do for my children and I've chosen to go that route. Like your life is like, it could have gone a whole different path yeah. if you had children. And so I really think that this is like the calling that you had and your truth. And it's in the long run, you're just helping so many other people. But you know what's so weird? It's weird that there are times that people would be like, wow, you're doing this, you're doing that, and all that, but where are the kids? Mm -hmm. what, what about, you, you, where are your children? You know, but the first thing, right? They expect that. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I literally would be like, oh, later on, because of the judgment. I, I absolutely feared the judgment, but the selfish thing I didn't see coming. I really thought, I thought through everything, all the fears were there, like, I, you know, people are going to think I'm not a real woman, um, that I'm not loving, I'm not caring, I'm not nurturing, all of these things. I never expected someone to say selfish. And the first time someone said, oh, that's very selfish of you, yeah. I, yeah. I, I was confused. Because I was like, selfish to who? I was like, isn't it my life? Right, it's choice. It, it's a choice. Right, and so when it was, like, was selfish that you want to have it for yourself, and I'm like, but I don't have children. If I had kids and I was like, screw you, children, I'm going to go off do this business thing, then That's it's freaking selfish, selfish yeah. right? Of course, it, yeah. But just choosing not to, I didn't see it coming. And so initially, I didn't know how to respond. Um, I got actually really upset, and I was like, why are you upset? It doesn't make any sense to me. So to, to allow other people's opinions, right, kind of going back to what I was saying in the intro, like we all just worry about other people's opinions of yeah. us on the decisions we make. Right. And now it seems to be flipping, where if you're a woman who wants to have kids and stay at home, then now people are judging that. And so that's really why I was so like gung-ho about getting you women on this episode <laughs> and talking about it yeah. because we all have different choices that we've made. Right. And I think that it's okay to say, yes, your choice is different from mine. Your choice is different from mine. But I still absolutely admire and respect the choices. And there's one thing that I've noticed that I used to do in the past. I can't remember who told me to stop doing, but I used to like, oh, I don't know how you do it, being a mother and an entrepreneur. And she's like, you know what? People say that to me, but the truth is, is that this is the life I chose, and so I figure it out. Mm -hmm. Just like you, Lisa, you've had a life that you've chosen, right. and you figure it out. If I was a stay-at-home mom, I would figure it out. So why is it any different? She's like, people put me on a pedestal for doing both. And she's like, I think that's detriment to them. Oh, and wow. it really hit me. That's so now every time I go to say, like, oh my God, you do so much, I'm, like, yeah. I try to bring it back. Yeah. Because it really is, us, just as women, we're all trying to do our best. Mm -hmm. Always, yeah. Um, it's, but, but, it, but someone will always judge it. How you said people say, why aren't you having children? I get people that will say, hey, where are your children? Right. Why are you working right now? And it's, yeah. it, it doesn't matter where, like, what route you choose. There's always getting, you're always having <laughs> haters. But then now I realized, hey, if I have haters, I'm doing something. I was so approaching this episode from like, as women, what different choices did we make? Um, and then talking about those choices and how it wasn't easy for any of us. So why are we always judging each other when we're all struggling to own our decisions? And then I came mm. across a quote of yours that really hit me. What? You don't breastfeed your baby? You use yeah. formula? You must be lazy. You don't use clothes diapers? You feed your baby food that is not organic? What does a stay-at-home mom even do all day? So why do women even think like this? What might be right for you and your baby may not be what other cho others choose to do. We all need to stop criticizing and judging other parents. And it hit me, I was like, wow, here I am worried about women judging each other for the different choices we make. And you had literally said, but even when we make the same choices, we're still judging each other mm -hmm. on the type of mother we're going to be. So, so yeah, you just completely opened the door to something I'm desperate <laughs> to talk about. Well, I, 
I thankfully did not have a problem with breastfeeding and I see lots of women that struggle with it. They can't produce the milk and they're judged when they have to give formula, but they physically cannot make milk. And yet moms are telling them like, I can't believe you're giving your baby formula and they can't produce the milk. And it's like, you're already in a hard spot. You haven't been sleeping. You're this, you're already being judged. Like I just, it didn't matter if I was throwing away a regular diaper People were criticizing, why don't you do cloth diapers to mm. help the environment? You have a for-purpose business. You want to make mm. money matter. Why don't you do this and this and this? And you know what? I don't have time for it. And I did diapers and I just organic food. I have all these, you know, I was trying to make for my first daughter. I was at home. My husband was gone speaking. So I'd be like, okay, I'm going to cut up some butternut squash and I'm going to do the food processor, do it all. And look at me. I did it. Like mm. everyone, please don't judge me. But I was exhausted. And it's like for all the moms out there that do have children and, you know, want to work or work one day, just know like it will get easier. And, you know, I just want all the moms just to be easy on themselves. And you know what? If there's laundry, my house is a mess right now. It's a mess, but I'm okay with it. And my husband's okay with it because I get to be there for my children. I am here. Mm. I am like doing so many other things. So like moms just have to be easier on themselves. And you know what? If you need to take a nap, if you have, can, mm -hmm. take that nap. If you want to go for a run and work out and that gives you joy, remember to take care of yourself. Mm. Um, I think self-care is really hard to do mm. when you're a woman, not even a mother, because I'm sure you guys will do whatever you can for your husband. You know, you will, when you were saying someone said you're not mothering or nurturing, yes, you are. I've seen you with your puppies. I've <laughs> seen you with Tom. I've seen you with your businesses that you've created. A business is a baby. Mm. And so I really think that it's just everyone needs to be easier on themselves. Yeah. So how do you do that? Because you know me, I'm oh. always like, give me exactly what you were thinking in that moment. So you've got people saying, I can't believe you, you own a for-profit company. Uh, for, you know, purpose company and you're just trashing this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're feeling the guilt, it's building up, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. That moment where you're like, you know what, this is holding me back and you s decide, you know what, I'm still gonna use it. How do you actually then do it? Because I'm sure a lot of women right now are listening and everyone feels feels the guilt and I wanna talk about guilt with you as well because mm -hmm. I, I had to mm -hmm. go over a lot of guilt as well. Feeling the guilt in that moment and saying, but I'm still not gonna listen to it and succumb to it. I thankfully have a great husband and for the women out there that are single or widowed, I really think if you have a good friend or a family member to help you see that because it's hard at the moment. Right. And so mm -hmm. thankfully I was able to cry, okay. which a good cry always helps <laughs> and, um, yeah. and like actually communicate with others and hear their insight because sometimes you don't always see it. So it's really nice to be able to talk to him and for him to just be like, babe, you're an incredible mother. I like what you are doing is good for you. And I just the affirmations that he gave mm. me, I'm not a uh, words of affirmation for the five love languages. That's not me, but at that moment I needed it. And mm. so I think that if you can't get through it by yourself, talk to somebody and over time, you'll be able to get over that, all those things mm -hmm. too. So it just, you need time and communication, I think, yeah. for all things that you're hurting about. Yeah. And it, it must have taken so much strength for you to say that out loud. It's embarrassing. Right. Like when you're sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, am I not a good mom? Like, right. was, was I deserving of these children where these, all these women are trying to have kids? And I, you know, I got pregnant a lot quicker than I imagined. You know, I wanted to have a baby at 35. I was like, I need 10 more years to build my career. I want this and that. And all of a sudden I had my daughter and mm -hmm. it was a shock and it was really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, let's, was, so before, let's put a pin in that because like, I want to talk about the guilt thing for not having kids. Yeah. Did you feel any guilt when you first were going to just follow your career? I didn't feel like the instant guilt because I felt like I had time. And mm -hmm. so I, when people would tell me, oh, what about kids or something? I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Even though I knew in my head at that moment, I was like, oh, no, it's not coming. Right. Like, I don't feel like I'm made to be a mom. Like, this is not for me. Yeah. Even now, if somebody said, yeah, could you not have kids or something? Yeah. I literally would be, because my path is different. Yeah. I just have a different path. Everyone has a different journey. Yeah. So 
stop trying to impose your journey on my mm -hmm. journey, mm -hmm. you know? And I think it's important that everyone chooses what's right for them. I think that that's the mistake is when we're choosing what's right for society or mm -hmm. the society says, that's when you get into trouble. For me, the guilt that I had really was, um, I told my husband when we got married that I wanted kids. And so part of it was like, well, and I knew that he was never one of those guys that was like, I definitely want kids, but yeah. I still had said it. So I was like, um, have I trapped him now? Like I'm starting to feel differently about what mm. I want in life. And so does this mean Lisa, that you're not a real woman? Does this mean that you're not going to be a, a good wife to him because you can't, you're not going to bear children, right. like all of this guilt. And then even my parents, all they kept saying to me my entire life and my, my poor mother, I love her to bits, but she still says it to me where she's just like, the thing that she wanted most in her life was grandchildren. Oh, that hurt. Wow. Now imagine okay. someone says yeah. that to you and she looks yeah. you in the eyes and I actually had to tell her because she kept asking me and I did the same thing next year, mom, next yeah. year, next year, I kept yeah. doing it. And then eventually one day I was like, I have to be honest with her. And so I sat her down and looked her dead in the eye and said, mom, I asked you to stop asking me this question because I've decided not to. And she started to cry. Oh. So the guilt, right? The thing right. of like, you always want to be the perfect daughter, right. the perfect wife, the perfect this, the perfect that. Yeah. Um, and then in order to like, I think for me it was, you have to acknowledge how you feel. You have to acknowledge that the feeling now, once you've um, accepted it, is that you're going to potentially hurt other people with this decision. But then I was like, I have to be okay with that. Yeah, how did you have you to get be through true. that? Yeah, I literally was like, I have to let my mum know. From So I put myself, in fact, in my mum's shoes. And I was like, all right, as a mother, what do you want for your children? You want them to be happy, right? So I just approached it from that. And I said, mum, I know you really want grandchildren, but I can't live my life for you. I love you. And I want you to know that I'm so happy with the life I have. And I know that you may have to go through a mourning period. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I think that that's important. Like mm -hmm. to just say, well, you've got to have to get over, I think is disrespecting the other person right. as well. Right. So it's like, mom, go through the mourning period. I'll be here for you. But at the end of it, this is my decision. And from here on out, please don't ask me the yeah. question. Because I used to then feel like I had to defend my reasoning yeah. and I didn't like how that made me feel either. Well, it's funny that you said we were talking about guilt because you reminded me before my dad passed away, we told him that we were going to adopt and he was so happy okay. he was so happy so my guilt is it's two, two things or two things that i struggle with right my dad saying oh my god this is great you're gonna adopt and here i am watching him die and then he died and then i'm like but now we don't want to adopt and but dad was so happy we were adopting oh. and so i did go through that how did you actually go through it then? Uh, we, we talked, my husband and I talked, and then we said, you know what, let's just do mission work, let's do volunteer work, let's be with kids in a different way. And I said, I think dad would be really good with that. Mm. And charities, we choose St. Jude's, you know, anything that has to do with kids. Um, and, and I have been at peace with that. Yeah. It doesn't need to necessarily mean you're gonna mother a baby or it's adopting a baby you're helping people with all the charities like St. Jude you've yeah. adopted all those children yeah you know like with Pencils of Promise the schools that we are mm -hmm. building I'm like those are our children too I don't know their names but like in my heart I know that I'm helping in a different way too mm -hmm. oh you and you reminded me too we actually adopted right when we first met 15 years ago my husband and I adopted a kid through uh, World Vision oh. So he's like in some uh, Zimbabwe, and so we, you know, send him money every single month. So you did and adopt. yeah, I, on a different. And level. we have talked about how we want to go and actually see him. And he's mm. now eighteen. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's so amazing. that's what I mean. Yeah. So it's, it can look different, and yeah. I think mm -hmm. that we just need to take the pressure off right. of what it has to look like. I think that. People do that so much, even with their careers. You know, they might want to be, oh, I got to be a singer, I got to be a singer, or I won't be fulfilled. And then other opportunities come, they take them, they're like, yeah, but it's not exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so they're not being fulfilled. And mm -hmm. I think that when we can relax and just be open, and that's what I've done my whole life now, is just been open to opportunity, open to what it is that the world wants to give me, 
and what I'm supposed to be doing and then embrace that. Mm -hmm. And whether it's the dog or whether it's world vision or whether it's my career. Or whether it's just lying in bed and not doing anything. Like yeah. if that's what you want to make sure happy, you don't have to be even creating <laughs> impact. It's the choice, choice you make. And then knowing like what you were saying that it is bringing fulfillment. Because what I do is bringing me fulfillment. I wouldn't mm -hmm. do it if it didn't. And the right. same with you and the same yes. with you. And I think that's what it comes down to. Because you were saying, right, what makes you happy? What is that thing that you actually want? Because it's different for all of us. Yeah, yeah. I've actually like just gotten an offer from the Professional Fighters League MMA, so PFL MMA, to be their new announcer. <laughs> Sorry, I had to clap. That's yeah. really amazing. And you heard it here first, people. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at my life and I'm like, this totally makes sense. Like, yes, it's going to take me on the road again, but I can. Mm -hmm. I can. I don't have to worry about the kids being at home and this and that and, you know, figuring it all out. And so I said, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do this. And so I'm going to take this new venture and just dive in and be a female now. Uh, empowering the world of MMA, you know, with the female first coming female in. commentator, yeah. right? It's like the the first female ring announcer, from Amazing. what I understand, which is so crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got like I got that that fulfillment of being like the first female at WWE to announce WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. And now women just headlined WrestleMania this past this past April, mm -hmm. and that was just tremendous being a part of that, going at times that I was the only female at times to be on the entire show, you know, announcing and hosting the show, I was the only female. And then now there's just segment after segment with females and then main eventing and now going into the MMA world. That's fulfilling me, mm -hmm. it is fulfilling me. It's like, this is my child, yeah. Yeah. this is my child, so I'm okay. So it's, it's great to be able to see and take from the unexpected such wonderment. And so I want to go back to something you had said earlier, which was you actually didn't expect to get pregnant so quickly. So you've got like the opposite story yeah. to Lillian in essence. Um, you would wanted to like wait for like 10 years, you said? Yeah. Okay, so take me through that because that's another thing that I'm sure people are struggling with of like, yeah. oh my God, now my life has changed. How do you, and I'm saying this coming from a woman who doesn't have children, so I do not mean it in any way, shape yeah, or form yeah, yeah. bad. How do you not have resentment for your children for changing your plans? Oh, and I mean good that right? question. Like, no, totally. Like, yeah. totally. Good question. I, I, yeah. The moment I found out I was pregnant, I dived into the bed and I was crying. Right. And I okay. was like, no, well, oh my gosh, I have so much more to do. And so yeah. at that moment, I was like, what? And, you know, I have, you could say, resentment sometimes, not towards my child, but towards being able to be like, I have an opportunity here, but I can't take it because I have to do this and this and this. And it was a hard process in the beginning to be like, oh, I'd love to just pack up and go with my husband to Italy right now when he's like leaving on a flight, but I can't. Right. And so I guess resentment's a harsh word, but it was a struggle in the beginning. But when I would lie there and I would hold her and she would just look at me and I'm like, I'm a superhero. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, I am feeding this child with my body yeah. and I'm keeping them alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's I amazing. Like, like I would, I'd be like, okay. Your fault. And, and you're like, you <laughs> Like, you know, I've, I've been blessed with this gift and I did hear how other people did have problems giving, you know, getting pregnant. And so I was like, I would always come back to that the moment I see her and her eyes. And I'd be like, I don't need to go on that trip. I'm going to go later one mm. day. So I think that it's just like how you play it off in your head. And so it was definitely hard at first because mm. I'd just be at home with throw up on me and boogers and poop under my nails mm. trying to change her. So at mm. first I was like, I could be out having fun, right. you know? And it wasn't even partying like I want to go to bars. It's just like I had been with my husband and working with him and I, all of a sudden it was just stopped. Mm. And so that was difficult. And like I said, we wouldn't be where we are now if I wasn't blessed at that time. It was the right time. It was on my time. That that was the right time, and I and when you were saying something like how when someone just wants to sit in bed and you know they're not you know having such a great impact on certain things, it's like I look at that person that's sitting in that bed and watching Netflix all day, getting a phone call from their friend, 
and they're available at that moment mm -hmm. and that person's in a really difficult spot maybe suicidal maybe you know struggling it's me calling on the other end like I'm I don't know how to get through this and I get to call that friend that's mm -hmm. available and they're impacting me so like everyone's impacting somebody it's on a different level for everybody God, I love wow. that. So there's two yeah. things here that I, I cannot continue to go without recognizing. <laughs> First of all, God damn woman, thank you for being so honest. So yeah. here's, and here's the truth. Social media, we all know people want to throw hate. So oh. some people may be hating right now that you were that honest oh, for about sure. it. I'm and here's the rage, great news to true. anyone yeah. that's watching or listening. If that annoys you, don't subscribe to this channel. <laughs> but I sincerely yeah. mean it, and I don't mean that in a horrible way. Yeah. I actually mean this needs to be a place where women can be free and mm -hmm. open and raw to talk about things that they're really struggling yeah. with. And so if people are going to judge you for it, this isn't the show for people to watch and listen to. So. Thank you so much. Like, I literally, I've got a sweater on, so you can't see. But, like, you just gave me the chills all over, girl, because you were that raw and honest. And I only applaud you and hope that more women are able to be yes. honest like that. Because it wasn't that then you went off and, like, took it out on your children, right? It's the fact that, no, this is the real me. Mm -hmm. I struggled with this. Yeah. And I overcame it. And I overcame it by doing this and this. But to ignore that you actually went through it is doing a disservice not only to you, but every single woman that is listening to you right now. Oh, for sure. And I don't think I would be here if I wasn't authentic. I'm not going to be like, oh, look, my social media, like everything's perfect right. because they need to know like it is really hard and it's going to be OK. And I am embracing when people are going to give the negative comments because that was hard to get through in the beginning. Yeah. But I realized now my um, I met a girl named Teddy Mallenkamp. She told me, like, Sonny, you've been put on this platform and that's a huge responsibility. And but she told me, you know, I'm having thousands of women hate on me mm -hmm. at the moment, but I have had this platform now and I'm inspiring hundreds of thousands. Right, right. Through. Yeah. So I, I look at it like the more real I am, I will get hate, but I've literally been blessed with this opportunity that I never wanted in the first place. Mm. Like, let's be real. I like doing logistics in the back of Thrive and my husband gave me the mic and it just doors keep on opening. And I've said no to things because I was so scared, but I don't want my daughters to ever see that. I want them to see that mommy's fearless. I tell them every night, mm. my husband and I, you're extraordinary and you're fearless and you're a hatter and you never give up. And so my daughters know we never give up. And like, I promised my friend Claire, who passed away, I'm not getting emotional, but um, I told her she has no voice. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna carry on her legacy by talking mm. about cystic fibrosis and sharing it on our sta like, stage at Thrive and we've raised over $400,000 for her. Wow. So the awareness of cystic fibrosis has just skyrocketed and that's because I did take myself out of my comfort mm. zone and I'm putting myself out there and so my daughters see that and all these other women and men. And, you know, I'm just like enjoying this ride and I'm going to have negative feedback. But like when you ask if I resented it, I have to be honest for my girls, for Claire, for everybody. Wow. Ooh, girl, I, I know, know right? I, didn't cry. I hear her. <laughs> I gotta be, but it's, it's wild because I hear you and it makes me want to cry. Because I feel less in a way. Yeah, I've had a great career, but I feel like, damn it, could I have been both? You know, and so it's hard because I wanted to, right? And then you try to talk yourself out of it. That's the thing. It's like sometimes I go, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And that's, I think that's the struggle is, um, is trying to talk yourself, yeah, this is what I want, I'm good, I'm good. And I think it's, it's good to also say, you're going to have those days that you go, damn it, mm -hmm. did I pick the right thing? It's God, just a I, constant I, <laughs> struggle, man. I really have thought through that because I, I can't predict the future. And I've played over in my head the worst case scenarios, and I'm just going to share them with you guys. It is, what if in 10 years Tom dies? Yeah, now you're all alone. I don't have kids, <laughs> yeah. I'm too old to have children, yeah. and now I'm alone. Yeah, I've thought that too. And so I have to, I have had to ask myself, will you be okay with that, Lisa? Yeah. And the answer I came to is, no, it's going to be upsetting. But I can't make a decision now based, out on. based on fear. True. Yeah. 
And so, because I said to my husband, I'm like, look, babe, if something happens to me in 10 years, you can still have children if you decide to, right? If you met another <laughs> I know, woman. Isn't that, damn it. Yeah, it's not, true. <laughs> it's it's not ab- fair. Right. It's the absolute <laughs> truth. Yeah. And so part of me thought, maybe I should um, uh, preserve my eggs yes. and preserve his sperm just in case. Yeah. So I had contemplated that for a while. And then I read about how much hormone therapy you have to go through. My hormones, as oh, you know, my health yeah. is just so out of whack that the intense hormone thing, I was like, that's actually not good for my body. And again, going back to, I'm doing all this because I'm so fearful that I may regret it in the future. Mm, And so to harm my body right now when it's already struggling doesn't make sense. And so I've told myself this so many times so that God forbid something does happen to him. I'm gonna at least with clarity know it didn't, I'm glad I didn't choose that. Even though like, cause with you, right? It's that the emotion of, I could have maybe had had both. But the reality is, you know, deep down, you shouldn't have had children with your first. I know. No, I definitely know that I shouldn't have had children. I think it's the more the adoption thing. Did I let that fear of, oh, I don't want that in my life. And can I handle both the career and adoption and, you know, the fear of, of that. And then when I hear her and she's making it work, then I go, did you undersell yourself thinking that you couldn't make it work? I'm making it work, but I'm also sacrificing on different levels, like spending time with my husband. He's like, babe, I, what about me? Like, by the end of the day, you're so tired, and you tend to the kids, and you tend to the business. Like, what about me yeah. over here? So, like, yeah. we struggle with that, and, like, we have to do audits on our relationship. Mm-hmm. You know how you do audits on your mm-hmm. business? We do that with our business and us, too. So we'll look down, and he's like, okay, we need to make sure we have a date night this day because I need this from you. And I'll be like, I got you, boo. Like, mm-hmm. I'm there. So yeah. it's it's – I am – you know, I, like I told you, I have like an inch of gray hair and I spray, spray in it <laughs> because I'm not going to, I don't have time for that four hours to go get my hair done. And, you know, my nails look like this for the past month. And I'm like, please don't zoom in. <laughs> but, um, but like there's things, <laughs> <laughs> there's things that like I'm choosing to do and I'm, I, and it's madness mm-hmm. always. Like, like you said, like I am struggling. Like I would love to have those bag things. That you, I want to put those there, you know, yeah. and, and I haven't slept and I'm cranky and I, I'm, you know, I'll snap at my children because I don't have patience because I'm so exhausted or someone's mm-hmm. calling and I can't get the phone. So like, I may look like I have it working, but I'm also crying in a closet because one day it's just too much for me. And I'm like, why do I have all of this on my plate? Yeah. So I think that with you, it'd be like, you figure it out. You right. always figure, like, yeah. figure it out. But there's some people that really like have to give 100% to everything and have to have perfection. And if they can't, then they will get depressed. And then your yeah. self-care is like completely gone. So it's just... When I look at, when I hear you say that, and I appreciate that, like you said, being so authentic and all. When I hear you say that, and I, I know me, and I know how hard mm-hmm. I like to work at things and I know how good I like to be at things. But I do feel that had I had the kids on top of that, that maybe I would have turned around and resented them mm-hmm. or be like, I'm no good at anything. And, you know, so I feel like maybe yeah. it wasn't in the cards for me. Yeah. <laughs> and that was actually one thing that I had asked myself is, are you OK with um, not giving ev- both sides 100 percent? So if I was yeah. to have kids, what would that actually look like? And I was like, OK, well, clearly it's possible, right? You're sitting here right now and you have an incredible business and you have kids. And so I was like, OK, it's possible. There's proof out there. And I was like, what does it take to do that? It takes having to let things go. It have, you know, Like you said, there's times that you're not going to be able to do business. There are times you're not going to be able to attend your kids' things. And you have to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. And I asked myself the true question, would you be okay with that? And I said, no. Because I know myself just well enough. And I would be able to make it work, but I know it would be such a struggle for me because I love to go in 100%. It's not even like I can't change. I like to. (laughs) So when I went in and analyzed what would my day-to-day look like, I thought this isn't a life I would want because I want to go in one way or another 100%. Because people Mm -hmm. said to me, Belisa, you can afford nannies. And I said, I don't want full-time nannies. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I would, if I'm going to have kids, I want to be able to be there for them and not have a full-time, there's nothing wrong with a full-time nanny. Please hear me. There's nothing wrong with it. (laughs) If that's what, oh my God, you should absolutely do it if you can, Mm -hmm. if that's what you want. But I didn't think I would want it. And I analyzed myself and I said, I I don't want that. 
And so that was part of my decision making and knowing that this is who I am. Yeah. And I actually don't want, and going back to what you said about your husband as well, we had that discussion as well. And I said to Tom, right now you're my number one. And right now I'm your number one. If we have kids, that will change. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Yeah. And he said, I don't want that. And I looked at him and I said, I don't want that either. Mm -hmm. But we had to have that discussion because it may you know, sound, um, I think people are now talking about it more and more, but back in the day, people were like, what do you mean? Like, of yeah. course the husband should be number two, number three. And he's like, right. but it doesn't mean that he wants to be or that it feels <laughs> right. good to be. Right. So at least have the discussion with him so he's not blindsided because nature makes sure that the mother puts her kids first. Yes. Right? You have to, yeah. others children wouldn't survive. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, you literally had that kid going, oh my God, I'm responsible for this human being being alive. Yeah. yeah. That's tremendous. Right. Yeah. That is tremendous. Yeah. No pressure. But, but I like when you bring up the nannies because there's nothing wrong with a nanny. And I feel like sometimes people are put on this like spot where, you know, like I can't have a nanny, but they would like to do both, you know? And so I look at it like a maid or a chef. And I have mm. n never wanted one because my mom cooked everything from scratch. She cleaned the whole house and she took care of us and she worked two jobs. And so she sees me now and I've had to outsource things so that I can do what really makes me happy. And so, you know, my mom will come home and she sees like um, someone washing my dishes. She's like, why, why are you not washing your own oh, dishes? No. And, 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 and why didn't you make a meal from scratch for your husband? Oh, and, and so it's, the that's what you're supposed to do pressure, you know yeah. but i i need to be able to sit down and do tutoring homework with my daughter and know that i'm helping her with that and you know i do have my kids they'll go with grandma and grandpa for the day so i can get work done like i want to emphasize that there's no balance whatsoever mm. like everyone's like where's work life about like there is none yeah. yeah so i think that if you have your day make sure you do what makes you happy yeah. and triple down on your strengths. Like my strength is not cooking. I have my trainer cook some meals for me and my husband. You, know? you say your strength is not cooking. cooking. I love that. My weakness is, is, yeah. is not fit. I yeah. like that. That's I perfect. I love that. I've never had that's perfect. That's I'm trying to be more positive. I'm trying to teach my girls things. So I was like, awesome. it really is like what I choose to say, like this is like going to make me sad. And, but like um, I told my husband that something on me, I looked like I was fat. I didn't like the way that it looked. I looked like my legs were really big, okay? I didn't realize my daughter was in the room and she's six. And so when I was walking out to go change, she's looking in the mirror and daddy's right there and she's like, do I have fat legs? Oh, Are my God. legs big? And I'm like, holy uh -oh. cow, at every moment I'm impacting these girls, yeah. you know? And like, I'm, swearing or my husband is and my three-year-old says a bad word you know like you they're just sponges and so it's like a huge responsibility at all times and I do get so stressed out because I'm like I'm I'm being myself but then I also don't want to be a bad example so like at all times I feel like mm. I need to be on point well and that's a lot because even when I do an autograph signing or something you're on, you know, you're just on this, that, 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 and you talk to people and all. And then when you come off of that, sometimes you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired. Like you've been on. Trained, yeah. So I can't imagine you're on 24 seven because you just said it, you're yeah. impacting them. So you're on, it's like you're on stage and everything you say and you've got the cameras on you because they could the hear cameras, something. Yeah. And then that's when my husband says, it's hey babe, time for me. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm back. Yeah. Okay, what can yeah. I do? You know? Yeah, I mean, just in what we're talking about, guys, like there's so much we can talk about, but literally the takeaway is it hasn't been easy for any of us. No. Whether you're having children, you're not having children, you can't have children, like it's just so difficult. And I love the fact that you guys have come and have been so honest and transparent. It has been so impactful on me and I'm sure everybody watching and listening. Um, so thank, thank you guys thank you. so much for that. But like, I already know your guys' superpower because I've just been listening <laughs> to it, but please let me know. Let's start with you, Sanya. What's your superpower, honey? Making a human. <laughs> Making a human. Bam. Um, I don't know if anyone can beat that. Right. Yeah, seriously. Um, right. Yeah, and just trying to do what I need to to make them realize that they're extraordinary and fearless and to never give up. That's 
that's a superpower that's going to take me eternity to learn. But I'm just hoping that I'll be able to that's show them that mama's, mama's a superhuman, you know? That's beautiful. That. And where can people find you and Thrive and all the amazing things you're doing? Well, Thrive is our website. WWW, oh, I don't want to say that. Attendthrive.com. Att <laughs> Showing your age there, woman. Yeah, right, exactly. Attendthrive.com. <laughs> and Lisa will be speaking there. Oh, I can that's awesome. Wait. I am. That's I am. Awesome. I'm just, I'm so excited about that. And then just Sonia Hatter on Instagram. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Super proud. You know, I've never thought about that. And I guess it's just um, the word that I had chosen for this year. My, my word of impact. What I've, and, and that's to be open. And again, it's to be open to whatever the calling is. If it's um, you know the career, is it not to have children? Is it not mm -hmm. to adopt? You know, just be open and don't try to figure it all out. And so, just by being open, it's unfolding itself in these beautiful packages, and uh, that's been I feel very empowering for me. Um, yeah, so we'll see just what this new journey is going to bring. And, oh. <laughs> and where can people watch you to follow this journey? Yes, Everywhere. At Lillian, <laughs> Everywhere. I know, it's so funny. Um, no, at Lillian Garcia. So I spell Lillian with one L in the middle because it's a Spanish name. So at Lillian Garcia on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook. Amazing. Yeah. All right, guys. Oh, my God. I've been so impacted by this episode. These women are so phenomenal. Really, really, truly. The fact that they were um, willing to come on and be so vulnerable, I hope, impacted you guys as much as it did me. And I really hope it left you guys open as well to knowledge and decisions that other women make in, uh, in our lives and around us. So please, 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 guys, do go follow these, um, these women. They are absolutely incredible. And if you're not following me, follow me at Lisa Billu. And if you're not subscribed, click that little subscribe button down there and until next time guys go be the hero of your own life thank you what up guys lisa here thanks so much for watching this episode and if you haven't already subscribed click that little bell right in front of you click 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 away we release episodes every wednesday so be sure to get notified until next time go be the hero of your own life